Hey, it's Dan. Welcome back. You're watching I Allegedly. And uh, I've got a good one for you today because here come the robots, guys. All this talk about AI and robots are on their way. Hit the like button, please. Subscribe to this channel. And today we have a sponsor, Patriot Gold Group. I'm out at the Great Park in Irvine, California. There's so much activity going on this morning. It's funny. You think summer's over, but it's just not when you see a day like this. And uh, they got the the hot air balloon that they let everybody go up for, for free, which is still a great deal. But uh, let's get into it. This is wild, and this was sent to me by somebody in Wyoming where they are testing a brand new robot called the Warthog. And a Warthog, basically, it's about, you know, four foot by six foot, and it herds cattle, herds cows. And it's been very, very effective so far in keeping the cow safe and they've tested it over and over and over again. This is just the beginning and a man named Marcus McGee who is with the university has talked about how hey this could be the future of you know you know working on a ranch and uh, could eventually save a rancher a tremendous amount of money. Now if you read the article below they're talking about you know, right now, hey, if this cost me $50,000, this isn't effective. It's not effective right now. But eventually, like all good things, when it comes to AI, the price is going to come down and you're going to see that the initial costs are going to pay for themselves. But, you know, this is the first time I've heard about, you know, robots when it comes to ranching. So kind of wild, guys, kind of wild. So... Do you think this will be effective? Where else are they going to use this on the farm? You know, robots are fixing different things. You know, problem with these, uh, you know, high-tech uh, tractors right now is they're incredibly expensive. And every farmer I've talked to, everybody loves the fact that, you know, they like an old, you know, diesel engine. They like something they can fix in their own and not have to rely on technology. And again, these things are super sophisticated with cameras and eyes, and they can do everything from, you know, spraying crops to planting to weeding. There's so much that can be done right now with the tractors right now. You haven't seen anything yet. The next area is in the grocery business right now. I'm trying to get a good shot of that thing taken off. The grocery business right now is utilizing more and more robotics that go through the store. You know, it's funny. I did a story a year ago in front of the M Casino where they had one of those robots that was going around. And it was kind of a joke because I'm thinking if somebody bumps into this thing with their car, the thing's going to fall over. But it's loaded with cameras. And the idea with it is just to eliminate pain for two security guards. And if they can do that and they can have cameras out in the street, then they don't have to worry, you know, do we have to send somebody out there? There's more drones being used outside of casinos than ever, but inside of grocery stores, down the aisles, they're using robotics to stock shelves. You're gonna see stores that are built with a uniform shelf pattern, and what the uniform shelf pattern is gonna do is it's gonna make it so that things you know, start at a certain height, and if you have certain size, all, certain size merchandise, use olive oil, for example, it's gonna be on this shelf, on this height, set it this high so that the robot can restock it. And again, let's say you wanted to raise the entire store price, you know, 12%, you could send the robot through and digitally they could do this in just a second. See how high that thing goes up there. It's way up there right now. So just a fun feature that they have out here. Lots of cool stuff. This place was supposed to be done about 10 years ago. And like all good construction projects and real estate projects, uh, you have recessions and you run out of money and the thing gets delayed, delayed, delayed. But the robotics of everything are fantastic. You know, my friend Mike, the health ranger, is always convinced he's going to have a, you know, a home robot that's going to do, you know, tasks around the house that are going to, you know, load the dishwasher and do dishes and clean up and you're going to train it to be able to do this. I think that's coming. I don't think it's coming, you know, in the next 24 months, but I think you're going to see this very, very soon. So, you know, 
it all gets down to to price. It all gets down to you know what can be done on a decent amount of money. Gosh, look at this thing. Way, way up there now. So kind of fascinating, guys. But the the herding cattle, that's the first thing I've seen. You know, security is a real problem. You're going to see more and more of these that are going to run security, car lots, places that are high crime areas. Uh, you're going to see more and more of these things that are going to report, uh, you know, activity. It goes to the drone activity. Huntington Beach, California, now that the beach season is done, they're testing out drones in Huntington Beach in the downtown area. They've got a, I think it's, um, it's like four square miles that they're testing the drones. And the idea with this, there's police activity, there's a fight, they can send the drone over very quickly. They can determine, is this something that officers need to be out there on instantly? I just, you know, if you've ever been to one of these beach areas, you know, or any area where there's partying and people are drinking, they stumble out of a bar, you need to have a police presence. Having some robot like we saw at the uh, M Casinos, not going to keep people, you know, it's not going to deter crime, I don't think. Will it get people, will you eventually save time in sending, if they need an ambulance, if they need, you know, more officers? Yes, that will do that. But I think it's a give and take, and it'll be interesting if people will get hurt over this. Let's see, is this thing coming down now? Yeah, it's coming down now. But kind of a fun thing to do. Everybody, every time I film out here, I've done it like three or four times. How come you're not out there? I'm not going there by myself. Like some weird, I want to go on the ride by myself. Anyways, you guys get the gist of it. So, fun thing to do. The wind's really blowing too, and it's all, te it's all tethered, so it's not blowing to the ocean or anything fun like that. If you guys can tell how windy it is out here. But let me know what you guys think of the, uh, uh, the robots taking over everything. I just think that you haven't seen anything yet. And uh, it'll be interesting. If you've seen it, you know, if you've seen applications where these have been used, let us all know. Because the idea, guys, is to take away jobs. It's to make it so that you don't have, you know, the robot on the prairie is not going to bitch and complain. It's not going to show up late. You flip him on, you better make sure he's charged. And if he is... You know, the cattle will be in line. You don't have to worry about any attitude. Oh, this guy's hung over again. You don't have any problems like that ever again. That's the beauty of this. Let me know what you think so far. And would you go on the hot air balloon? Let us all know. Okay? It's decorated. They always decorate like a jack-o'-lantern face uh, right around Halloween. Let's talk about our sponsor, Patriot Gold Group. You know, September and October have always been bad months for the stock market. You need to protect yourself today by contacting Patriot Gold Group, 888-330-1431. Let them answer all your questions about getting physical metals into your portfolio and your retirement. You know, no matter what else you hear, think about what Goldman Sachs just said. They said gold could easily hit $5,000 an ounce. What else do you need to hear? Call them today, 888-330-1431. If you do not want to call them, use the link below, fill it out. They will send out a free investor guide. It's absolutely no obligation to get information. Buying gold is easy when you do it from number one rated Patriot Gold Group. UBS just said that silver is going to be the trade of a lifetime right now. Contact Patriot Gold Group today. They sell all types of precious metals. 888-330-1431. Do it now before it's too late. A few more things to cover in the economy. Prime Minister of Japan, Ashiba, he steps down. And he's, man, that guy's had a real tough road. Worked out a deal with us and uh, has had it really bad ever since. And uh, he steps down, and uh, they say that they're going to choose a hardline guy to replace him. We'll see. We'll see. I think right now we're seeing a real problem globally 
with everything. Everybody's having a problem with immigration. Everybody's having a problem with business. Everybody's just, it's just economically, I think we're in for a global recession myself. That's, you know, my own prediction. But, uh, you know, we'll see that, what happens. Um, the CEO of Google thanked Donald Trump. He's glad that the uh, antitrust case is over because they didn't have to break Google up. Google stock shot up at the end of the week 10% and uh, just killed it. But again, you know, the Trump administration is the one that originally opened that up. And Sundar Pichai is the one that sat down and said, hey, you know, we're glad that this is done. So was it the right thing to do? Was it fair? Do you think Google owns everything when it comes to search? I do. I think Google's a mess. You know, they run everything. They run it all. They run it all. So it's wild. This park has got a ton of soccer fields out here. So nice place to walk, nice place to run. They had a really nice professional soccer stadium out here too. But uh, what do you guys think? Should Google have been broken up? Who's the next company that should have a problem? Let me know. You know, as far as antitrust stuff. Who do you think, you know, is a monopoly out there. Now, one thing that you're going to experience in a big, big way is a problem when it comes to EV car companies. Rivian, the car company, has just announced that they're gonna lay off 200 people. And this is going to be a dark electric car winter. Oh, shut up. Who writes this crap, okay? going to be bleak. Yeah, it's going to be bleak if you were stupid enough to buy one of those cars that are going to be paperweights in your driveway. You know, I needed that part. The uh, magnet, the Magneto um, starter won't, you know, I can't get it. And Rivian's out of business now. You know what I mean? You're going to experience this with these different EV car companies. Yes, there's going to be mergers. Yes, there's going to be some companies that are going to survive. Tesla will be the only one when it's, you know, comes to not having issues. But look at all these car companies. Now, it has just been recall after recall, firings after firings, and uh, now you got Hyundai with their problem. You know what's funny? That is such a travesty. The Biden administration did these press conferences talking about the 6,000 jobs that were going to be generated by that plant in Georgia, and uh, Hyundai just used it to enrich themselves and rip us off. So who's next? You know, are you surprised Rivian's, you know, laying people off? None of this stuff shocks me anymore. Not one thing when it comes to an EV car. But it all comes down to, Dan, there's, you know, if there's no $7,500 discount, they're not going to sell cars. Think about it. If you're not, if you're not good enough to ne uh, negotiate $7,000 for the price of one of those cars, don't buy one, guys. That's what you're doing. You're trying to save $7,500 off a car. You should walk in and offer 25000 less than what the car costs is where you should start if you want one of those cars. I would have them throw every service uh, package, you know, I would, you know, nitrogen in the tires, all the scams that you guys sell when you sell new cars, all this stuff is ridiculous. But again, people are concerned about a $7,500 coupon and that coupon is the difference of you buying cars or not. I don't, I don't believe it. I don't believe it. I believe that people, grandma hates the car. Grandma can't plug it in. Grandma doesn't want the responsibility of that. Uh, the gas station I go to has a deal. They don't have full service, but if you walk up and flash your lights, no matter how old you are, maybe you're disabled, maybe you're young, maybe you just don't want to get out of a car because you're a, an attractive woman, they'll pump your gas for you for free. Okay? Well, they're not doing that for the electric cars. Okay? Let me know what you think. I'm going to finish this video with these last few things. Don't forget, we uh, just sent out an email. Check your spam filter. Make sure you get our latest email. And if you're not on the list, what are you doing? Come on. Check the uh, video description below and you can join our email list. We have a private channel, I Allegedly Live. And uh, you can sign up at iallegedly.tv. It's all uncensored stuff. It's great. Price goes up at the end of the month. Final, final story. Laura from Connecticut always sends me gold. I mean, just such great stuff. But she sent me something that was unbelievable this time. 
and it was a listing for a tiny home. Now, I'm not sending it because she looked at the place and I'm not you know, gonna promote the tiny house, but 400 square foot home, $160,000 in Connecticut. You know, 6,100 square foot lot, but like she said, you know, I mean, she was brutal. <laughs> She went and looked at it, and it was brutal. She was brutal in her description. I mean, other than taking a blowtorch to this this place and a and a gas can, I mean, she just said everything needed to be ripped out. From looking at it, from the pictures, it did not look too wholesome and like it was moving ready, to say the least. But guys, what are you seeing as far as these tiny homes? Are you seeing that the problem with it here in Southern California? Yeah, you got this park. The deal with uh, when the Marine base, El Toro, was closed, they were going to turn this into a park. You've got thousands of houses being built here that are way too expensive. The majority of them are built on top of each other. The tax base is high. You know, but then you get this luscious park near you. Would you buy one of those tiny homes? Would, was that, does that interest you? The thing about this is that we see a lot of tiny homes here, but you've got, you know, it's like a dormitory, cabana style, and you got some idiot next door to you and you can smell, you know, Mildred's cooking next door. This thing was at least on a 6,100 square foot lot. So let me know what you think about this. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. The robots are coming, the robots are coming. Let me know what you think about this. If I, if, uh, if I missed anything or any other stories you ever want to send me, it's hello at iallegedly.com. I'll see you very soon.